Hello once again. A short video today to demonstrate this vintage doorbell that I got for 50 cents at our uh, at a yard sale on the day of our uh, on the day of my town's townwide yard sale. This doorbell was made by the Trine division of the Square D company. Square D was a manufacturer of a lot of electrical equipment, especially doorbells and doorbell accessories. Square D is now a division of Schneider Electric. I have no idea when this doorbell was made. My guess is 70s or 80s going only by the design of the doorbell and the design of the box. The doorbell works fine. It didn't work when I got it. The plungers just needed to be cleaned and now it works perfectly. The box, as, as soon as I get this thing out of the box in this video, uh, once we're done reading the box, the box is going in the garbage. It is so, like it's got this going on here, and it smells like death. It I've never smelled anything like it. So I do believe that there's probably mold or something on this box, so I'm going to toss this box as soon as we're done reading it and the doorbell's out of it. Um... It was number 30A. We'll start at the bottom here because the front certainly doesn't have anything interesting. Although it does show this originally retailed for $11.99. So there it says number 30A. Safe, simple instructions enclosed. Trine Consumer Products Division, Bronx, New York, Square D Company. And then it is there again in French, so this must have been sold in Canada. Printed in USA. Doesn't say where it was made, but I'm guessing this was made in the USA. Easy to install. Two note front door, one note rear door. And this is something I didn't know is that this and many doorbells of this type um, actually have two different plungers on them. There's a plunger that goes ding dong. It plunges <laughs> in both directions when uh, power is applied. But then there's a second plunger that only hits the ding part. There is no dong. Because uh, when the plunger returns, it just hits a cork bumper or a rubber bumper. And so you only get one note. So if you hear, you know, ding dong, somebody's at the front door. If you hear just ding, somebody's at the back door. Very uh, nifty. I didn't know that was a thing. Don't know much about doorbells. What's this say? Add a, add a chime or two. Eight note chime. So that's probably one of those like Westminster chimes. Uh, additional two note chimes can be added. Uh, checklist of items needed. Full power transformer. Uh, so yeah, doorbells you generally run on AC, uh, low voltage AC. You have a transformer that steps the AC current down to like 16 volts AC or 10 volts AC. And the doorbell button is just in series with the doorbell. And when you hit the button, it completes the circuit. And your low voltage AC goes into the plunger assembly, making the plunger go in one direction. When the button is released, the current stops flowing. The plunger springs back and hits the other uh, bell. So it says full power transformer for multi-chime, lighted or unlighted push buttons, single strand bell wire or two strand speaker wire, and number four extension chimes. Today's family lives throughout the home. Den patio basement workshop trines low cost multiple chime installation overcomes noise from TVs, stereos, etc and assures effective chime signaling throughout the home, easily installed to existing chime. Chime location, dining room, blah, 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 workshop, you know, put one everywhere, every room of the house. For best appearance, a mounting height of six and a half feet above floor line is recommended. Locate chime in living room, foyer, or kitchen, so that it assures best tone throughout home, or use multiple chime installation around the house, in den, patio, or workshop. Trines low cost, multiple chime installation overcomes noise from, yeah, we already read that. And then the same thing in French. Okay, let's get this thing the heck out of here so I can throw this box away. And, uh, never have to smell it again. So here's the doorbell. 
very nice and yeah this, is, this has got to be 70s or 80s just based on the design of it it is all plastic almost entirely plastic inside and out and it's got some instructions here what do we got helpful hints look at this artwork wiring transformer be sure house power is turned off before wiring transformer when installing try and install wires in pairs run three separate pairs of wires from push button and transformer to chime location this will reduce your labor provide for easier future replacement with any four or eight note chime oh this is interesting we have a totally different thing here PSF Industries Inc what the heck what happened to Trine or Square D was PSF the Canadian importer of Square D's doorbells I don't know and that's French and that's English uh, we already saw that uh, we already read that most doorbells, buzzers, or small chimes in use today operate on a 10-volt transformer, which should be replaced with a 16-volt, 10-watt type for superior sound volume. For multiple chime installation, a 16-volt, 15-watt transformer is required. There's the wiring diagram. There's another wiring diagram. So they, they use this same set of instructions for, uh, for both types of chimes. You mount it on the wall like this. It, it does have to be in a specific orientation so that the plungers kind of float and are thus, you know, move and thus move freely. Um, and it's it's either like this or like this. It must be this way because... No, nope, it must be this way. There we go. So you'd mount it like this. And uh, I did come with the mounting hardware. This must not have ever been installed because it's got the screws are still sealed in the little plastic baggie. There's a the little solenoid coils right there. This doesn't come off to me as a particularly um, prestige quality product. For one of those, you would buy like a new tone or something like that. But I get the impression that this was quite a budget unit given the way it's constructed. The front panel just pulls right off it. Uh, so let me pull the front panel off and we'll look inside. Here's the inside of the unit. And uh, as you can see, the bells are just these rectangular metal bars. They're basically just tuning forks, just not fork shaped. Um, and as you can see, look at the rust on these screws. This thing must have been stored in a horrible environment, uh, which is obviously evidenced by the condition of the box. Um, but there's your wires. One goes straight to one leg of the output of the transformer, and then you have your front door button and your rear door button that activate each these uh, two plungers, respectively. And if I prop the thing, I'm doing this for people who know nothing about doorbells. Uh, I'm probably frustrating the doorbell fans that are watching this right now, which is probably going to be most of the people watching this because they already know how a doorbell works. But I'm explaining this for those who were interested enough to click on this video but might not know anything about doorbells. I didn't until I owned this thing. Um, but there you can see your, your two plungers. Notice they float very freely. They're suspended in midair by these springs. And they go down through the center of each solenoid. And uh, when you apply power to one, it hits the first bell. And it hits the second bell. Uh, for your back door circuit, it hits just the first bell. And it bumps up against this little cork bumper. And this bell's not making any noise because it's this battery's resting against it. But uh yeah, and once again right there, you have your wiring diagram, very handy. And notice right here it says in big capital letters, do not oil plunger. Now, some of you know, especially if you follow me on Twitter. I'm a bit of a shit disturber sometimes. I, I just I just cannot help myself. And uh, 
one of the this was one of those times where I didn't. So when I got this thing, it obviously didn't work. The plungers did not move freely. And the first thing I thought of, well, I saw this do not oil plunger, and I'm like, well, you know what? Let's try oiling the plungers. Um, so that's what I did, and it made it worse. It made the plungers even more immobile. So what I did was I ended up taking the solenoid assembly completely out, which is super easy to do. It's just held in. You just have to squeeze on the uh, on this. Just squeeze on this bracket, and the whole thing comes out. The solenoids, the plungers, everything makes it very easy to work on. Um, so I took this assembly out. I removed the plungers, took Q-tips and alcohol, cleaned out all the oil that I put in there. So now I'm back to square one, which is good. And so the issue was the plungers themselves, well, first of all, dirt had just worked its way inside the plunger cavities. So that was probably most of the problem. But also the plungers themselves had a bit of rust on them. And, you know, it's that type of rust where it, you know, instead of like making pits in the metal, it kind of raises the metal a bit. Um, so the plungers, you know, were a little bit thicker in some spots than they used to be. So I put each of the plungers into the chuck of my drill, and I spun the plunger in my drill, and I used uh, a Scotch-Brite pad. I wasn't able to remove that rust and shine up the metal, but I was able to make it a lot smoother and not as raised, and uh, that was good enough. I put everything back together, and uh, it's working perfectly fine. So, with all that said, you know how this thing works. Uh, all that's left to do is uh, to demo it and I'm gonna do that using this 9 volt battery that's all that's needed and I could actually do that by touching the battery to the respective terminals polarity doesn't matter and it works just fine on DC um, but to make sure it works as good as possible and as intended I'm gonna have it oriented like this and I'm actually gonna put the no, I'll demo, demo it first open so you can see the plungers work. Um, but I'm going to run some wires here from these screws just uh, so that when the cover is on I can still demo it. So let me do that right quick. Alright, I've got it wired up here. I wire brush the uh, screws so they can clean up and make better contact. Got my 9 volt battery wired up here, and then it's just touching the positive to each of these wires. I think I've got it propped up vertically enough here for it to work properly. And uh, rip to my neighbors who will probably wonder who the hell's at the door. So this is the front bell. Very nice sound. And then uh, the back door chime. And another test with the cover on it, and my microphone is pointing forwards this time. The front cover actually attenuates the sound a bit, which I didn't expect. And out of curiosity, I measured the current draw, and with the 9 volt battery it's about 800 milliamps. Uh, when I tried it with a 12 volt battery, it was more than 2 amps. Um, and I suspect that, you know, those solenoids are going to have a bit of inductance to them, which makes for less current draw on AC, which is good. You don't want to burn out those coils. I suspect that uh, if you were to wire this to a 12-volt battery and hold the button long enough, you probably would burn out the coil. Um, so, uh, DC operation obviously works, um, but you wouldn't want to put this into normal service in a situation like that. Also, the the more power you put into this, the harder the plungers hit and the louder it is. That 9-volt battery is pretty much the bare minimum for making the plungers move enough to actually make the thing sound. Um, but when I measured the current with the 12-volt battery, those plungers were just slamming the bells super hard. I, I held the bells with my fingers so that they wouldn't uh, be loud, and those plungers just slammed against them. So I imagine in a proper setup with a 16-volt transformer, this thing is probably way louder than I have demonstrated to you today.
Well, there you go. There's what 12 bucks got you for a doorbell in the 70s or 80s. Kind of neat. Sounds nice. It has mechanical parts and it goes ding. It's fun. Now the question is, the hell do I do with a doorbell? Well, here's the thing. I actually have a doorbell. Uh, it's a wireless one that I bought on Amazon. It's, uh, it's got a uh, little remote that goes outside that runs on one of those little 12 volt N batteries. And then it's got a part inside here that plugs into the wall. And it works great. But man, wouldn't it be cool if I could use this thing and have it work with a wireless remote? Because obviously I can't run a wire out of this apartment and outside. So I have a legitimate question for you guys if anybody knows more about these things than I do. Is there something you can buy that lets you wire up a wired doorbell inside but activate it using a remote button on the outside? I have tried to Google this and I have found nothing. If any of you guys know if something like that exists, let me know because that would be damn cool if I could use this thing for my actual doorbell. Barring that, um, I could use it as a prop for fun for like live streams. I think I have a transformer here that might work. I don't know if it supplies enough current. Um, but then I could just go to Canadian Tire, buy one of those $10 doorbell buttons, and I don't know, ha have it as like a prop for a live stream, like I'm some sort of dumb radio DJ with a soundboard <laughs> or something I don't know but there you go a look at a uh, doorbell manufactured by the Square D company a 50 cent yard sale special thank you very much for watching a special thanks to my patreon supporters and I will see you guys next time